so you're going to want a few things to make one of these. The first thing, obviously, is going to be an enclosure. I've just used this beat-up prototype. It's been filled a thousand times. Uh, I just tape over the holes I don't want and uh, keep going. Um, but yeah, you're going to need this and you're also going to need something that can drill into one of these. So I'd recommend picking up one of these step drill bits. It makes life easier when you're drilling enclosures. You can just slowly increase the size of the hole uh, until it fits, basically. You'll need a mono jack socket like this. Um, could be any type, doesn't really matter. Could be stereo uh, if that's all you've got, but you'll only be using these two lugs. You're gonna need some of these piezo discs, uh, so you can pick them up from eBay. They're super cheap and you can buy them in bulk, uh, so you can pick up a fair few for not a lot of money. I'd recommend buying the ones that are pre-soldered just because it's a bit of an awkward thing to solder, especially if you're doing it for the first time. Your life will just be a lot easier if you just get it pre-soldered. You've got two wires coming off of this. Uh, your black wire is your ground and your red one carries the signal, so that's your hot wire. So you're obviously, you're gonna need some solder and an iron. Pretty obvious. You'll need some wire cutters and some wire strippers. The other thing I'd recommend picking up is the spring sets. You can buy them off eBay. They're relatively cheap, they're not really expensive, but it's just useful to have an assortment of sizes and they'll come in handy for a bunch of different projects. I also picked these up from eBay. It's just an assorted screw nut and washer kit. Uh, so you've got your little uh, screws, your little bolts, uh, you've got your nuts somewhere in there and uh, you've got your washers. So basically, those do the same thing as these nails that I've just crudely hammered into here, but they're just a little bit more structurally sound. This is all you need to start making noise. Your enclosure, jack socket, piezo disc, and some solder. Uh, so I'll go ahead and mount this socket into the enclosure. Trying to lose the washer. So yeah, make sure that um, nothing's touching. You don't want this area of the jack touching the back or it'll ground itself out and you'll just uh, kill the signal. So yeah, pop it in there, get the washer on, get the nut on. Cool. So yeah, you've got two lugs coming off of here. You've got your ground lug, which is the one that's connected to the center of the jack. And then you, this is for your hot signal. Uh, so your red wire from the piezo is gonna attach to this guy black wire is going to attach to this guy and that is literally it uh, so right so I'll strip this down so yeah, take a bit off the black off the red so the black wire is going to go into the ground lug so get that on there bend it around for a bit more strength cool so uh, pop the red wire into the other lug. It's for your hot signal. So bend that into itself. Just give it a bit of structural strength. Cool, so they're both attached onto there now and that is literally, <clears throat> in essence, all you need to do. You can pop that in there. So all I'm doing here is just taping this to the side of the enclosure. The way the piezo disc works is it picks up vibrations from a surface as opposed to picking it up from vibrations in the air. Uh, so anything uh, that vibrates the enclosure should be picked up by the piezo disc. Um, on its own, it's a relatively weak signal. So um, with previous noise boxes I've put together, I've included a distortion circuit into the box itself, but uh, for this, uh, for the time being at least, I'm just gonna leave it as a single jack socket. So first, we'll just see what this sounds like, nothing attached, um, and we'll screw some bolts in later, but for the time being, let's just plug this into some pedals and see what it sounds like. So this is in essence an instrument now. It's going, so this is the output, it's going into this uh, pedal and then out to my guitar amp. You might find it's a bit awkward plugging these sorts of things into guitar amps because there'll be a lot of feedback, a lot of noise. You might want that, you might not. But it's generally a bit more tameable going into an audio interface. Um, so you might want to experiment with that as well. But for the purpose of this, I'm just going to show you what it sounds like with just a piezo in a box, basically. So as you can hear, it's picking up any 
noise that I make on the desk and you hit it directly, you're getting a bit of sound. It's not the most interesting thing in the world when it's just a box by itself, but um, obviously you can use your imagination to make it a bit more exciting. So I'll just crank on this. Obviously there's not a lot going on here, so you can make it a bit more exciting by adding more effects pedals, but I think the most uh, effective way of making this a bit more musical is adding to the box itself. Uh, so I'm going to screw in some holes, add the bolts, and I'm going to mount a spring on this guy, so I'll just flash forward to having done that. Cool. So yeah, all I've done is I've drilled two, uh, in this instance, six mil holes uh, for the bolts to go through. Uh, this is still all just wired up, I've just taken the tape off from the uh, side of the enclosure. So we'll pop this open, we'll grab some bolts. Yeah, so now we've basically got this, we've got these two little poles here, make sure that they're on tight enough. You might want to use some pliers just to tighten those up. Wouldn't worry too much about messing up the surface on something like this because it's essentially just being built to get beaten up anyway, so pop that there. Then you want to grab your assortment of springs or just whatever you've got lying around to be honest. You know, we'll look for something that's a decent size. So that looks like it'll just about fit. So pop that on there. You just pop this straight back in again. Might want to re-tape it. Electrical tape doesn't tend to stay sticky for long. You may want to seal this back up at this point. I tend to just pop two screws in the back when I'm building stuff for myself because it's more than likely I'll want to open this up and add something else in later on. So screw those in. Cool, so the back's on. Uh, we've got this little middle bit. Bring it up a bit. Probably get two springs on there, to be honest, the height of those. You can see that's bowing a bit, so might uh, be an indication that the bolt needs to be a little shorter, but for the time being, it'll do the job. Grab pedal again. Uh, like I said, on its own, the output from a piezo disc is relatively weak, so you always want to bump it up with something. Uh, you might want to experiment on putting different circuits in the box with it. Uh, for example, the bed of nails that I built has got a fuzz in there. It's an oscillating fuzz, so when it is oscillating, the oscillation will fight against the signal from the contact mic, which can be quite fun. But yeah, let's pluck this on. So without uh, any effects, you can still hear the spring, you can hear what's going on, you can hear the box, but it's just a lot more interesting when you start adding distortion into it. So one of the fun things that you can add to the mix is a reverb or a delay. It sort of adds a bit more uh, sound to play with, basically. Okay, so now we've got a delay in the mix, so it makes things a bit more interesting. We'll pop him on. So immediately you've got a bit more to play with. So once we bring in the distortion. It gets a lot more interesting as soon as you add effects into it and uh, like I said if you add it into the box then the box itself is uh, an instrument basically uh, with a lot of uh, sort of variety in the noises that you can pull from it so the only limit 
with this sort of uh, instrument building is basically your imagination. You can do whatever. This is just a scaled up version of this. I've also added a circuit on board for this guy. So there's your output jack. Uh, I've got, this is the power jack. It basically just connects a nine volt battery to the fuzz circuit that's inside or disconnects it. This switch is a high-low switch. It's essentially a low-pass filter. All it does is trim some of the high end off the signal. So when you're getting insane amounts of feedback from a guitar amp, you can chop the high end off the signal and it just gives you a bit more wiggle room to play with that noise before it just gets sort of unbearably feedbacky. But when you're going into a door straight into your computer, uh, it doesn't really matter how crazy that signal is. Your computer tends to be able to handle it. Uh, the particular fuzz circuit I've got inside this has got an oscillation switch which uh, essentially lifts part of the ground on the fuzz circuit which makes uh, the fuzz oscillate so you've got a tone uh, that is generated by the oscillation that is sort of controllable by balancing the volume and the gain. Uh, it's, you get quite interesting results having an oscillating fuzz uh, being fed by a contact mic because the two signals kind of wrestle each other so you've got the sound from the microphone wrestling with uh, the natural oscillation that the fuzz is putting out. This last switch just turns the fuzz off and on in case they want to go straight in uh, without any fuzz basically or put it through some other pedals. But yeah, that's it. Uh, experiment, try different things, try different bolts, try attaching different things, doesn't have to be springs, you can use whatever you like. Um, just keep it interesting, see what sounds best to you. Try different circuits within the box itself as well. Um, and yeah, don't be too precious about it. They're built to be beat up, so expect chips. The paint on this, I just sprayed it in five minutes, all the holes are just taped up, it uh, doesn't need to be good looking. Just needs to make sweet, sweet noise.